Samsung still taking away that big comfort champion from Punch, uh, which means that he probably wants to get his hands on the wreck side, but Samsung, they very well could first big night, depending on how the rest of this draft goes out. Zyra LeBlanc so far for Kongdu. Samsung, what's gonna be that last ban? Ooh, last ban coming in. I mean, on blue side, you actually have so many options because you can both target ban and you can also like ban OPs. In this case, they're target banning with the Cassiopeia. I think that's smart enough. Like, clearly, Kong the Monster put so much value on that one pick. They were willing to sacrifice the rest of their comp just to first pick it. So it makes sense to actually ban if you have a free ban anyway. My first impression here is that Samsung want to first pick Rek'Sai, expect Kongdu to take away the Orianna, and then just run to Leah again that they ran yeah. so well before. Because clearly Kongdu is reaching for mid laners. The Cassiopeia with Ori left up as a natural lady matchup felt like a reach. I actually like the Maokai ban we thought on blue side in game one. We might see that from Kongdu Monster, but, but suddenly a lot open here, including the Rice. And okay. they like to ban Thresh so often, and then whenever they feel like there's something else that's more important, they don't ban it. Do they pick it really early? Because they do they really value that as one of the no. best supports right now? I think Kama, Zyra, even Nami is actually better than Thresh right now. Obviously one of them is banned, but Kama is still there, and that's a good pick or takeaway from Congo now. Much better first rotation. Much better. Sure, much cleaner. On the red side, you get two of the picks, so I guess hopefully one of them is pretty good. You were supposed to get at least one of these last time and not fumble both of them over. Look, to sometimes the you miss out, you miss the pass. You can't catch it every time this year. All right, well, that's still going to be some solid pickups here for Kongdu Monster. Punch, of course, is going to be a little bit relieved that he was able to secure the Rek'Sai for himself, but uh, now they have to be concerned about this rise in the mid lane. Oh, baby. oh boy, I'm ready to go. Kha'Zix coming in the jungle for Ambition. This is a classic. One of those reworked assassins. I know, classic Martin, we were pick. talking to Fischer, and you were like, I can't see him in the tank meta. Well, guess what? He's locked in. He's Ambition. Locked in? When, when, when Ambition last played uh, Kha'Zix, he was a mid laner. That's exactly. how long ago we're talking about. <laughs> Again, and that was, uh, he was playing this the first time Faker got a career kill. Exactly, you're right. The, we saw that highlight clip many times over at OGN, the solo kill Nidalee versus Kha'Zix matchup. Both of those junglers now, yep. so Zembis. <laughs> now, Kha'Zix's problem in this meta is you can't really kill tanks in team fight. You just don't have the damage. You're very good against squishy targets when they're split up. So Nautilus obviously coming in from Kongdu. Maybe they had planned to run something like a Jace against the Puppy and try and have a winning top side. But now when you see the Kha'Zix, you just go full on tanks here. You got shields as well. Like another problem for Kha'Zix is support items are pretty overpowered in Locket and Redemption. So as an assassin jungler who needs isolation to deal proper damage, you're often not gonna find it. And when you do, there's a shield or it's yeah. a tank you're hitting. It's, it, it's a risky pick. But again, you're 1-0, it's a BU5. I, I like that he tries. So Kongdu's leaving their AD carry to last. I'm actually smelling a Twitch again, guys. I think this is sort of draft where you could understand taking Twitch. Kha'Zix doesn't have a lot of backline threat. Sure, if he finds stuff in the backline, he might kill a Twitch, but realistically, there should be the Nautilus, the Rek'Sai in front of him. It's a movement speed as well. And that's something that Samsung have to wrestle with, because if you're gonna last pick AD carry, who's in last pick Jinx, who's in last pick Vayne, who's in last pick Twitch, I think that's kind of what they're setting up for Ooh, by not Nami, dropping yes. carry. Oh, well, yeah, Love we could it. be seeing the Nami coming through as no! support. Oh, but they're going <laughs> to Nami's so back. good against Karma. Why hey, do you guys refuse you don't to understand. play Nami? Samsung loves to play Nami when Wraith is in the lineup. Oh, but it's He's so the dirty good. Nami picker. That's now, funny good. enough, Call JJ, we said this in game one. He's only played one competitive game on Thresh, but his solo queue is spammed with his champion, man. Most played in solo queue for him, 68% win rates are like impressive score lines as well from him. Clearly, it's something he's been practicing and he has it ready. Let's see if the bans from Kongdu Monster were justified or if Cordelia can't perform. They have a lot of options for ADK. Because they have the Karma, it can just be Ezreal. Now, while I say they're going for a risky pick, they could just be trying to get a favorable or competitive laning matchup. They didn't manage to find that in game one. Soul has been their carry. Given how strong Ruler and Core JJ are, I think you have to gamble with the bot lane because you won't outskill them. They will go for the Ezreal. It's a much better Ezreal lane though with the Karma. Yeah, and this pick and ban phase is so much better from the Kongdo monsters now. They have pushing priority in the bottom lane. They have two tanks against the Kha'Zix. They have the wave clear from an Orianna in the yep. mid lane. So there's a lot more control here, a lot more options for Kongdo monsters and how to play out also the mid game because they actually have lanes they can play around other than just Edge trying to like 1v9 in the mid lane. Well, it's going to be a you know, safe pick going in against that Thresh and that Ash. Use that Arcane Shift to try to dodge around, keep yourself from getting locked down by that bottom lane of Samsung. Just have to not flash Arcane Shift into two enemies. So Soul definitely going to be working on that. Good I'm advice sure that, for AD carries out there. I'm sure that I'm sure that is coach. You wouldn't think he'd need it. I'm but. sure that his coach had talked to him and said, hey, that 
little thing you did there. Don't do it again. But now the big gambit is Kha'Zix jungle. The last time uh, Ambition threw out a jungle pick, it was Skarner just before Worlds, and that yep. definitely did see some play. Kha'Zix, sure, you see it in solo queue, but I agree with your skepticism, Divisio, about whether it can work in competitive play. Of course, the upside of Kha'Zix is deletion damage, specifically yes. on the back line. So if he gets going, which he shouldn't, given the matchup, the upside is certainly there for the Kha'Zix. If you're playing like a Chaos game where there's a lot of picks happening, and you're split pushing 1-3-1 one, one with the Rise, the Kha'Zix can certainly find these targets in side lanes and then try and take them down. All right, well, let's go ahead. Let's stop the guess and conjecture. Let's dive right into game two. Welcome to Summoner's Rift, Samsung, and now over on the blue side. Hear the fans coming through. 1-0 up over top of Kongdu Monster in this best of five set. Kongdu got to be looking to fire back. Bit of a standard draft coming through from them. The Ezreal, not the most impressive thing from Seoul in the last game, but now we have this Kha'Zix from Ambition. But at least it makes sense. Everything about the draft makes sense. The Ezreal lost when you're like, okay, safely can lane, will have push priority because of the Karma makes sense. So the karma priority is what we thought we'd see in game one, mm -hmm. but they kind of forced themselves into a mindset where they need to first pick Cassio mm -hmm. and things fell apart. We'll mm -hmm. be seeing a lot of members meeting. We do have Kongdu camping the They're brush setting up bot. a trap, yeah. They're hoping that Kordra J steps forward to try and like push Gooko back because these supports like to fight early on in level one. But, but me, Thresh doesn't really have any reason to do that. Also, the trend is usually for the support to rush to lane toward it rather than necessary to rush lane to base check it. Right, or you're playing like a Zyra and you want to get your plant yep. spawning in the middle of the lane, but again, Thresh doesn't really have any reason to specifically walk super aggressive early on, and that's why Kojiri does not do anything. Now, the reason I think he's actually picking this champion is because they're running this like super like pick skirmish comp. You know, you have Rune Prison, you have Ash Arrow, you have Hook from Thresh, and then you have the isolation damage from Akasix. So he wanted this more pick potential than the Nami, which, which is very focused on just pure laning phase. And let's see if it actually works for them, because this is a comp. If they start snowballing, they can catch people left and right. And one of the things, one of the main reasons you can do that is if you take the outer ring of turrets like they were able to do in the previous game, someone tries to come and push up a wave, Ash Arrow, Kha'Zix from Stealth, dead. Yep. That's what you can do. Exactly. That. That's what we're kind of looking for. So Samsung will once again, every team, of course, wants to take those outer turrets first, but it feels like if an outer turret's down, picking up farm in that lane, especially if Ash is there, is very, very risky. Just some little skirmishing coming out of the bottom lane so far. Before JJ starting with the play, not gonna be having that death sentence up yet, but a hell of a lot of damage in on Ezreal. Yeah, I'm not sure what Soul is doing right here. He literally ran forward into Core JJ and just got played and took a massive chunk of damage for it. Really poor start from him because now he has to burn his potion so early on. And these kind of mistakes can really cost you because the early game in 2v2 lanes is just so important. Like getting the good first base, getting push, pushing priority, it can just set up your entire team for success around the bottom side. So early mistakes can really hurt you in the long run. Right now, Sol can just use his potion, get some HP back, but he's now down one. You can see it's still there for Ruler, and that's a big sustained advantage. You might be tempted to kind of fall into those classic narrative traps, like talking about, you know, first final things. But that's not true for Kongdu Monster. They played a very high stakes promotion tournament and easily came through that. Then they've already played the Kesper Cup final and, you know, other games against top teams there. And sure, they went down, but they did take a game off the Rocks Tigers, of course, the original Rocks Tigers roster just a couple of months ago. So they have found themselves in these scenarios before. So it's surprising to see first in the draft phase, then just in some of these early trades, a bit of hesitancy and maybe overconfidence from the Kongdu Monster. Yep. Bunch looking for a kick here in the mid lane. He's nice going to go forward. Crowd oh. going to flash a punch. He's going to miss it. Doesn't get the knock up, and that's going to cost them the kill. Yeah, really important for Crowny. He could certainly have died if he actually got knocked up. Red buff on punch Gotta as well. Be careful. Going back in for a trade on the edge. Gets him low on mana, but he's going to have to back off. Yeah, the mana bar wasn't really there for Oriana kill, so that's why Ryze is able to walk up short. Sure. Now we'll have to recall, but should have gold for that first buy. Poor JJ looking for the hook, but the minions come through. So not going to find anything, but Ambition, he's pushing in. 
find his punch. This is excellent. He's low, and this is a perfect opportunity for Kha'Zix to come in. It's come excellent jungle path. He just saw him be DPS in the mid lane, knows they have priority. Even though his mid lane has gone back, he's confident they have priority, especially after the trades in bot lane. And yep, just steals away a blue, and now it's power farming his way to level six. Yeah, one of the best feelings as a jungler is if you don't need to help your lanes, if you're just farming and your lane is then doing all the work for you, dodging that gang from punch. So he's now low on HP and has no flash, and you just kind of walk into it in the jungle full HP. It's a little bit too easy there for Ambition and a good takeaway from him. Core JJ has been uh, fishing with some hooks in the bottom lane. A few too many in my opinion. You don't just randomly throw it out to hit a comet. It really doesn't do anything. Save it instead. But uh, he's looking for somebody's picture. He's an aggressive summoner here. Like a lot of focus on trying to kill someone from Core JJ. I mean, if you talk to other pros, they talk about the mind games of Core JJ. Specifically his skill at skill shots. His smartness in trading in the mid lane. So, just to say, they're just really considering their options or just putting in, planting the mind games for later. Every missed hook might actually play into that big mind game. Fisher Glass half full. Yeah, he's trying to see where he's juking. So next time, it's exactly. like, ah, you juke the to old the Mad Life 2012. The very story. old Mad Life yeah. one there. It's like exactly what he's doing right now. Ambition tried to gank the mid lane and realized he's playing Karsix and he can't actually <laughs> gank 3 6. And he's like, well, I'm just going top lane instead. Well, Punch spotting out that. Little invade there from Ambition and Crown with that Tremor Sense. But won't be able to uh, get a whole lot done here, it seems. Punch still keeping up in CS, but hasn't been able to find any successful ganks. And, you know, that flash missing that on Crown at the beginning of the game, that's, it hurts. that's indicative of how the rest of this game is going to go for him. Then things are looking a little bit grim for Kong, too. We'll give him a second chance, though. Of course, but it's those small plays where you're like, if you execute that correctly, you get an advantage for your team. And you need to get these advantages to kind of snowball the early game if you are the Kong Duel Monsters against Samsung, who's such a good late game team. And you then miss them, and that's typically what we see in finals, where it can be a little bit one-sided. And then meanwhile, Kha'Zix C, you commit a flash, knows that if you tunnel into a camp, you have no way to get out. Why not walk up? If you try and walk away from the camp, you isolate yourself. It was a level four to level three. Just missing that gang. The cost of it was felt in multiple ways, and Ambition, six at six minutes, he's uh, he's certainly well ahead. Yeah, going to be happy with that one. So he's going to go back, get his first purchase in the Caulfield's Warhammer. Don't get that control ward out as well, so try to get some vision priority maybe around the Dragon. It is an Ocean Drake, so I don't think we're going to see it taken uh, relatively soon, unless Samsung just feel comfortable enough to go for it. Yeah, focus will definitely be on uh, getting down to turrets, unless Ambition can, like, jump the wall and there's no vision on it. He can sneak it away on his own. Definitely something Kha'Zix can do. But it's fun to see the difference in comps. You know, there's the pure team fighting comps from Kong the Monster we see so often in this meta. And then this very skirmish-heavy pick comp from Samsung with, like, 1-3-1, one, one, where Ryze is in... It's a split pusher in the side lane, and Karslik is trying to catch people off guard. Fun to see how Samsung can execute it, because normally they're very good at playing like multiple lanes. And I trust a lot in Crown to be the man to find openings as well. Let's see what happens here. Vision, he's waiting in the brush. Red is going to go over. Just sitting sneaky, unseen. Sneaky. Punches there. He's going to take a good chunk of damage. Leaping forward, gets the hate spikes out. Not the hate spikes leave. <laughs> there was, but now he's going in, trying to get that first blood, and he'll be able to do it. I don't think he's the wrong champion. That's Evelyn, but. That's going to be Ambition coming up with a solo kill over Punch. And the first side of cards that you see the change when you evolve the Qs. If you hit an isolated target, you go down to about a one second cooldown on the Q. So it does plenty of damage. Ambition was so patient, light in weight. His veteran years certainly on full display. And he was already snowballing, now a kill too. Uh, this is going to be a super fed Kha'Zix. And yep. then you talk about good lanes to gank for a Kha'Zix. He has the instant knock-up CC in top lane. It's Ash Arrow in bot lane and instant cast CC in mid lane. This is a Kha'Zix's paradise. So yep. future teams watching this VOD, please understand, you need to set up the Kha'Zix for success in Samsung. They stacked it so that Ambition, if he got a lead, could run away with the game. And that kill, it looks so easy, but honestly, a lot of credit to Ambition for understanding, you know, the, the jungle pathing from Punch. Fight in top oh, lane. Yeah, Kube going low. Oh, oh flash over by Roach. Gonna dodge out oh. the keeper's verdict, but Kube still looks like he, he can't walk make into the lack of vision, especially with Kha'Zix not shown on the map. Yeah. We got hyped for a moment, and then they walked away. And that was the most that we've seen these top laners do in a 1v1 for quite some time. So I think it was uh, some warranted excitement. <laughs> we were, it was pent up 43 minutes of game time I think we've had. It was pent up top lane excitement. Yeah, so it was uh, almost a kill coming through. Now Crown and Edge just going to be trading back and forth. But again, Edge out of mana won't be able to find that kill onto the rise. Yeah, we can see uh, back timings haven't been in favor of Edge. You really want to get Lost Chapter as quickly as possible on Oriana because then 
you can actually get enough mana back from levels to take some of these trades and have some of that kill pressure when a target maybe doesn't have flash for a moment. Sadly for Edge, he didn't get that on his first back. He hasn't gotten a blue buff yet either because it was stolen away by Ambition earlier. And that simply means he's not able to kill anyone and punch. Didn't have to fight. Okay, to be fair, we can see everything exactly. he can't. Yeah. Maybe Ambition is there, and then suddenly he dies if he gets hooked. And that's the important fact, the last part of that, that last part of that point, Ambition, because up top, the Nautilus, sorry, the, they thought about walking up the Nautilus to try and get the kill, realized, wait, I don't have vision in the river, don't have priority, I'll back away. Just there. There could have been a Kha'Zix lying in wait, and especially when you've seen the Kha'Zix snowball and you know that he can snowball out of control. That's the level of respect you have to show, but that's what's been earned, and it all comes from Punch missing that first flash knockup. No priority on the map yep. to a Kha'Zix is just a, a terror, and that's what the first 10 minutes the subtext has been. Yep. Ambition, maybe looking for the flank. He's going to get spotted by that ward in the brush. Luger throwing out the Q, letting him know, like, yeah, we know that you're there. Yeah, and when you play Kha'Zix, these dives can be very difficult to execute because two guys are standing together. You often need more members, and that's why Crown is coming down. But Kongu is here as well to defend, except for Edge. He's still sitting oh, mid. Crown, he's going to go ahead and warp his way in. Comes forward, gets a lockdown onto Soul. Ambition going to get popped up in midair, going low. But the box comes through, and that's going to be a kill picked up as Crown takes out Soul. Double kill, let's go ahead and make that as Punch is going to fall as well. Ed finally getting the rub down to this bottom side of the map. Crown's going to flash away, looks like he's going to stay alive for now. But poor JJ is an answering kill from Kongu. Can they find more? The tether's out onto Cubey. They're locking him down. And Edge is still pretty healthy on this Oriana. Looks like he might be able to find a kill. Ambition, he goes back in. He gets taken out as Roach comes up with a kill. Cubey flash forward by Edge over the Keeper's Verdict. Might be able to find this, and there it is. That's gonna be several kills picked up. In exchange, as Kongu Monster finds it, Shockwave on the ruler. One more hit'll He's do it. He's running! Range. Not gonna Red go off the command. Shockwave for the command to protect is there from Edge to keep himself alive, as well as a shield from Gugger. And Kongu Monster, they're gonna come out with several kills on that. Yeah, delayed three for three. Only the first kill had been picked up by the Kha'Zix earlier in the game. Really exciting stuff in the bot lane. I thought this was for sure gonna be there for Samsung, because they rotate first, and Edge is not involved in the fight for the first 10 seconds or so. Now, there are a lot of tanky members. There wasn't many people isolated, so Ambition wasn't really a huge factor in this fight. And when Edge walked up, it looked like Kongdu could turn it around. Yeah, Crown just uh, got caught in the front line, and then Kordu J follows after, so Crown had to flash away. He's out of the fight at this point. And as we saw earlier here with Ambition, it's hard for him to jump in because it's tanks standing there with shields, and he couldn't get proper isolation on his targets. Nice flash from Edge. Takes down that last target as well, and while he thinks he can walk back to the mid lane, yes, he gets jumped by Ash, but in the end, he doesn't die, and one, some of the problems for a Kha'Zix maybe later is when people are staying together, they have exhaust, they have knockoffs. It is hard to take them down, but overall still a fine call from Samsung because Edge was sitting in the mid lane. Just ended up staying a little bit too long. Could have backed away after two kills, and it would have looked great. They will maintain a lead here. Just 1.2 thousand in their favor, as you didn't quite get to see on your screen. Cougar did flash away from that Ash arrow, so they will go ahead and burn out that cooldown away from him. So nicely done by Ruler, making sure that he's getting maximum profit from these Ash Arrows every time he fires them off. But 4-3 to three on the board, no turrets coming after that. Both teams too weakened, so we're just going to go back to farming it. And I like Brown. that, but meanwhile in the mid lane, Crown, he's going to go low, but Ambition flashing in, crucially, going to help turn that one around, and Crown will pick up his second kill, 2-0-2 two two on that rise. Yeah, that one was a bait. So risky, though, when the two kills went to the Orianna, came back with Sorcerer's Shoes, lost chapter, and like, oh, wait. Will she have the damage taken down? Didn't get the initial burst. Kha'Zix was there to make the most of it. Kha'Zix continues, steals away the enemy red as well, and looking for some more bonus kills. It's spotted out, though. That's going to be the dredge line coming through. Locks him up, but he's just going to take a nice little ride on the blast cone over the wall. I love the veteran decisions yeah, from Ambition. Exactly. The first one to remember was when he stood in top rush, knew that even though the red was leashed, it didn't give vision. He could wait. He was face checked, got the first blood. And then in this fight, waited for the animation to complete for the anchor, then auto attack the plant to stop there being an interrupt. I feel a little bit bad for Edge because we've seen uh, seen Kong do monster like not opt into these fights because there's a chance uh, Kha'Zix would jump in and kill you. The one time he finally fully commits to try and get the kill, well, he's Ambition and you died. So it's a rough game for Kong do monster right now and Ambition on this uh, Kha'Zix here is just playing so well. Ruler will get to the lantern soon. Oh, it's really close. He's able to make it out of there. Oh! Use the heal yet. More than a casual JJ. sidestep there for all. Look, Jay is going to be chased now. He's going to drop the box. Ambition's almost here. Ruler will go down and so pops him. But uh -oh. here comes the Kha'Zix. Uh -oh. Gets the slow with the void spikes. But Edge and Puncher coming around the side. So they're going to get spotted by that ward now. Ambition, can he make it out of here alive? 
He's going to try to go back in, get a kill onto the Karma, but he's going low. Oh! oh! In, in the middle of the Dark Passage. Nicely done by Punch. And they will pick up a kill for themselves. A one for one in the bottom lane, or two for one, rather, in favor of Kongu Monster. Might not be over yet. They're chasing Crown. He's actually popping the Ghost and his ulti. Shockwave! Yeah, Shockwave's not going to pull him in, but he's out of the warp. And now he's in a bad spot. Roach is coming down as well. This should almost certainly be Crown falling down. They just have to chase him out. Last cone, does he want to take it? Yes, he will. Pops over the wall, but Guger is there to maybe tether him up. Guger can't walk up to him, though. Soul might just walk down and actually kill him in the end. He's, he's still he's sneaking dead. around. He's trying to recall the wolf camp. I was like, nope. Nope, he's that's going to be it. But he gets a solo kill, so no assist going over to the rest of Kongu. Monster Edge will come up with that one by himself. So a good delay there by Crown, but he falls in the end. And it's just 1,000 gold separating these teams. Kongdu slightly closing that gap. A really nice Ariana play there, just going for the ultimate because he knew that if he walked on it, he'd be ulted, wouldn't be able to go through, and he was stranded if he tried to sidestep it. Radius not big enough for that Realm Warp. Kongdu wants to come up ahead there. Now it's all tied up in kills. And this game, it feels like Ambitions felt like because he's so ahead, he needs to make moves at every opportunity rather than farming. And now they're starting to actually yeah. go the way of Condon. It really feels like the first part of every play Samsung is making is like the correct and perfect yeah. play for Kha'Zix, where it's very split up, he's able to like catch people left and right. But then the second half is where Kongdo Monsters gets to finally regroup, and then they can actually start picking up some kills in return. Samsung overstaying their welcome a few times now, just being a little bit too aggressive. And that's why they're getting punished, and it, it's Create a very even early game, because remember, Kongo Monsters, they just want to get to late game and play five on five team fights. That's the dream for them. Well, we had a bot lane party. They're considering a mid lane party here, Samsung. It looks like Cuvee, he's going to go ahead, peel back away from that one. Didn't see Punch up until just now with that ward. So the, one of the reasons why Samsung are making all these plays to, say, mid lane, all to bot lane, is that catching people in transition as Kha'Zix is the deletion damage. That's yes. when you're isolated, when you're walking between lanes. Yeah. So if they can get the deep visions, why? We saw Cold J just walking up to the enemy blue, not trying to steal it, trying to get the deep vision, catching people in rotation with Ash, Thresh, Rise, and Poppy is super easy. And one CC is enough duration for Ambition to get the kill. So this is a smart playstyle from Samsung, but they need to know when to back out. And now we're looking at like some of the items. Are there any adaptations? Because you're playing against a Kha'Zix, an assassin who can take you down so quickly. Soul in this one is not going for the Iceborne Gauntlet, even though it can actually greatly benefit him. Oh, Roach not going to clip the wall. Still very tanky on this Nautilus. Get the sudden, but they won't be able to commit any further. Bot Meanwhile, lane. in bottom lane, yeah, that is going to be Guger going down and Bishop taking that Dark Passage in and just completely decimating that car. So Samsung are winning this game. You might not see it. You've got, is it the 1500 gold? No, it's not really the kill lead either. It's the control wards in the mid lane, specifically around the river that is allowing to win them games. Wherever they get exclusive vision, there could be a Kha'Zix. Schrodinger's Kha'Zix, Schrodinger's bug is certainly happening in this game. And you talked already about Edge felt hard done by. When you get ahead as a Kha'Zix, and you get the lane control, you get the river priority. This is the mind game you have to respect, and that's purely because of Ambition's smart play in the early game. Yeah, once again, Ambition is outplaying Punch. Like, we just have to say, it. we needed Punch to be big in, in this series here for Kong the Monsters to, to win, but because Ambition is just a step ahead of him every single time, Samsung is able to always be proactive, force the play first. Yes, okay, they've overstayed a few times, but once again, it feels like Ambition just says, like, bot lane, okay, goes down, picks up a kill in bot lane. Mid lane, okay, goes mid, picks up a kill in mid. Jungle, okay, finds the jungler. He's been part of every single kill so far, and Punch has not been able to do anything in return. Yeah, we've been seeing some serious work done on this Kha'Zix so far. Hexdrinker and other call fields coming through from him, so gonna be looking for that ball of Mount Mordius at some point here, once you can go ahead and afford that one. For JJ roaming up over toward this mid side, but won't be able to find that Death Sense Edge immediately backing off. And to go back to that Ezreal point uh, I was trying to make before when we had a fight, him still going for Trinity Force. Like, I understand for these Korean Ezreals, they like this build because they go Trinity Force, then they upgrade the tier, and then they go play the Rune King, and it's very good to like try and take down these tanks for like maximum damage and you get some more cooldown reduction. But Icebone Gauntlet is really good against Poppy, first of all, because you can kite her fairly easily, and she de deals physical damage. And then against the Kha'Zix as well, it's a quite a lot of extra armor coming. And your comp, if you're Kongdo Monsters, is about surviving the initial engage coming in, because you're going to out-sustain the rest of Samsung in team fights. You don't need the maximum DPS from your Ezreal. You need him to stay alive. Yeah. Roach pushing forward. QA is going to go in, get that slow. Immediate flash out, but a nice oh. deny from the Poppy Shield, keeping him locked in. Can they find the kill, though? Looks like they will be able to finish this one off yet. And can Ambition, tasting their fear. 
He burns them out, and that might just be another tier one tower going down in favor of Samsung. Already picked up that first. Brick already picked up that first dragon. They're gonna tack more onto the board. Yeah, it's the dream to get those out of Charles down just like game one, but that dream looks to be coming a reality. He made the Skarner work, a lot of people tried, they couldn't quite make it work like Ambition, and now, making Kha'Zix look easy. 100%, it looks really, really good so far. Punch is doing absolutely nothing in return, and Ambition, it seems like he, he can pick any champion right now, and he can have an impact in the game, because Samsung as a team is enabling him, but he's also setting up the place. And it's need to be, it, needs, it needs to be said, this is not representative of the average Rek'Sai versus Kha'Zix matchup, because consider a game where Kha'Zix falls behind, fails first gank, gets counter ganked, whatever. Then Rek'Sai just sits in the lane, spots with Tremor Sensor Kha'Zix, and 600 HP, 800 HP Kha'Zix gets DPS down. When Kha'Zix is predictable, he is nigh on useless as a melee assassin. It's one of the reasons why in six years of competitive League of Legends, we've never really had melee assassins be a thing. I almost forgot who Trindamir was, then you can someone remind me about it, so. We have one in the audience, but look at Soul. this ruler just gonna flash forward on a soul, going super aggressive. Burns out the flash, nice interrupt here by Punch. Can they finalize the kill? Looks like it will be a yes. Edge just pick one up, so they trade back. Now, gotta give some credit there to Punch. Really good knockup. Has done it before in this game as well, so been able to land. He's done that like four times now. Yeah, a few good ones on these lances from uh, from the Thresh. But if we have to talk about his knockup denials, that should be just a style point on addition to perfect, smart ganking. Unfortunately, that's really all he has to show for his Rek'Sai so far. It has been rough, so we'll just take another look at this one. Ruler just getting that soul in on the soul. He so came forward. He was like, yep, I'm going for you. And yep. then you don't flash the arrow on, you know, on the, in the return here when we get that engage from Ruler. Really, uh, been in some strange games from Soul, a guy we hyped up a lot, who looked very good so far in this tournament, struggled a lot in the last game, played pretty poorly early game here, and now makes another big mistake. If you want to Arcan shift aggressively, you got to flash the arrow. But then you just have to wonder, is this, this the mind game for Soul? of thinking, I need to be the guy to do this. I need to be the guy to carry my team, because it seems like he's honestly reminding me of a play like some days. Crown takes a oh, nice yeah, trade. Crown, he's Whoa, he's dead. Gets rid of Edge before the Shockwave comes out and takes the blue buff to boot. Gonna hound down punch, we'll get a good bit of damage in on him. Can he find the kill? There's gonna be the question of mission now cutting off on the other side, and there it is. Crowd picking up two. And Cougar, he has to flash away, get away from that root prison. But here comes the warp in. They lock him down, and that's gonna be another swift kill picked up. A triple going over to ground. Yeah, exactly the game Samsung wants to play. Everything is spread out, multiple members fighting, 1v1, 2v2 everywhere. Perfect for a composition with pick potential and skirmish. That's an arrow on a big Nautilus. Might not, not do really a whole lot. You wanted trying to bend that one around. Okay, and ambition. Soul. Ambition gonna go low, but Soul still doesn't have a whole lot of damage. They'll pop that shield. Roach going backward, trying to get some damage. Another the member. JJ will make it out alive, and Ruler has finished off Roach in the meantime. Edge is alive, still has the shockwave. Samsung, they need to be conscious of that. Looks like they're gonna go ahead, finish off this turret just in time, and they will peel back four to zero in that regard, 13 to seven on the kills. And, and they are just running away with this game yet again. And we knew they had more in the tank. Samsung did not show much through this entire tournament. And it's exciting to see them play at this level, because suddenly for LCK, oh, we oh, he's yeah. having a PTSD, I think, right now. Edge going low, flash forward. Oh, Whoa. but he's actually not gonna get the kill, the Q. Will not hit as Edge flashes out. Punch, he's going to be fishing for a kill of his own. Brown, kind of being notified of this one. Places to will go. get the root, but Punch, he's not going to pursue any further. Wait! And what? How did he... Did, did, oh, he, did he throw an did E on the bounce? Punch? It must have bounced and actually killed Edge. Oh, can we see that? I think, yeah, I think he... What? That was one of the weirdest kills ever. That was... Okay. Pretty sure Ed Kama next to him as well. Guga didn't... Anyway, let's see what I would love to see that again. It must have been a bounce. It almost has to have been a bounce. Oh, it's the just minions. minions. What? Cougar. <laughs> oh, my Cougar, God. Cougar, how do you let this happen? Wait, Edge couldn't shield himself. Cougar didn't shield him. <laughs> what? All right, Kongdo Monsters, they are definitely, definitely <laughs> losing uh, their minds right now. I'm losing my mind. I'm tilted for them. God, that, that is so, that's got to be so... Such a face palm moment if yeah. you're Edge. It's been one of the if worst Googer. worst deaths I've probably ever seen. Soul's probably like, man, I don't feel nearly as badly about that flash arcane shift anymore. You guys take the cake for this set. So obviously Kongdo Monsters here. Everything is falling apart in this game, in the last game as well. And I think we have to highlight the fact that some of the things Kongdo Monsters had in favor of them in the last few games we've seen was that like they were practiced, they had the synergy, they were playing against new rosters. They were able to use that to especially win the late game fights. 
against Samsung, they just don't have that advantage. Samsung is sitting in the same situation. They've kept the same roster. They are a Korean team who knows exactly how Kong the Monsters likes to play, and they can also individually outplay some of these players. And I guess Kong the Monsters, they're just like losing all the focus right now. And then you see big mistakes like the one from Seoul and even bigger like the one from Edge right here. Yeah, yeah. Quite simply, it's just not acceptable at the highest level to die in that manner. The game one draft also seemed like they were tunnel vision on the wrong things and were punished by Samsung. And just on a simple level, opting into late game team fights against Samsung, who showed they could do that at Worlds at the highest level, was never going to be the percentage play against Hungry Monster for yeah. Samsung. Now it's almost a 10,000 cold lead, just a little ways away from that one for Samsung. Have that second Drake coming through the Infernal, which is just going to be helping them shred through these members of Kongdu even faster. And I mean, really, at this point, Kongdu, they still have these very tanky members that they can reach that point in Roach. I have to try to nullify Ambition's damage, but it just doesn't seem like they're gonna be able to reach that point. Roach, they get jumped on, a more hits will finish him off, and there it is, Ruler with the Folly is able to take him out. Now Cougar has to try to sprint away from here. There will be the shield coming through from Edge. Remember to use it this time, will help keep that Karma <laughs> alive. Learned his lesson, was most likely actually looking at Crown down and wasn't actually looking at his own mid laner at the time when it did happen. But yeah, Samsung full control, looking to just get down some in some in hip turrets here and then close out the game honestly and, and go to a third game where you will have match point. Everything is in their favor. It looks like they can draft almost whatever they want and they can just outplay Congo monsters, especially ambition versus punch. I, I mean, think you just recall this point, get a couple of control wards, go keep the Baron. I mean, you still have Kha'Zix. Obviously, Baron stays isolated just like the Drake, so will be a fast take. They will need Poppy to tank it up, so we'll have to invest multiple members. But the damage to that objective certainly will be very swift, and then they can, can close out the game. Now, of course, there is the other side of the coin where why even bother trying the Baron with how well everything's been going. Harder to pull off the picks under inhibitor turrets, but given the 10,000 gold lead, Poppy tanking the turret, you can definitely go for some pretty damn aggressive dives. You know, I, I watch this and I can't help but think that, you know, Team Liquid, uh, Immortals, they might be a little bit frustrated watching this performance. You know, we could just got, got to the finals. We, maybe we could have done better than Kongdu Monster because they are playing uh, pretty poorly compared to, the, to their usual sets. So I can't help but think that they have that in the back of their heads right now. Like, I mean, maybe if, if only it was us. Team Liquid had the chance. They played Samsung in, in the semifinal, yeah. and while the first game was very competitive, the second game was a complete stomp in favor of Samsung. So it's it's hard to say if any team could do anything against Samsung in the BU5. It doesn't seem like Kong the Monster can do a whole lot right now. And Immortals played against Samsung, and it went 2-0. So, so Samsung has basically beaten everyone on the way to this potential title. It's not over yet, of course, but it's looking very good. Yep, Roach, look at that dredge line, but he's merely prolonging the inevitable, really throwing out everything that he possibly can to try to get away. And at this point, it, it would basically be down to the end of to just not care uh, and just let him walk away as a mercy, but they're not going to let that happen. Cube will pick up the killing blow. Court JJ, I'm predicting the tunnel out from Punch won't find it, but Ambition's leaping forward. Trying to get that slow up, but I'm not sure if Samsung will be able to actually pursue this one. Actually, maybe not. Crown is in the top side. So if the map could just roam down, they're able to get Cougar in the end of things. Crown might just take this top tower, actually. It's very, very low. Oh, he plays it safe. I mean, the team is actually calling for Baron. There's a ward on it, not spotted, worth noting. Cuban. Okay, he's just going yeah, to wait Yeah, technically, Cuban was supposed to take the Blast Gun with Ruler, and then the Lantern was for Crown, but uh, Ruler just took the Blast Gun on his own, and Shockwave. Oh, Crown. Nice hourglass. Yeah, has that. Sonya's coming through. Punch going to come in, trying to get the seal. Not able to find a Crown. It's actually going to be the one to confirm the Baron. For Samsung Galaxy, they can pick up a very swift kill on the punch, just absolutely destroying him. And now with Baron, a wave pushing up at a very low inhibitor turret. I think Samsung, oh! All right, Crowd, you didn't see that one coming over the wall. <laughs> There's that ward there, plays for Kong Do that helped pick up the kill. You can see he's got a little, little, little shaken after Maybe that. Exuberance there, We've had some funny say. moments. We've had some funny moments in this game here. Some I mean, face bombs. That's going to hold him actually going straight over and taking out that inhibitor tower. So a very crucial pick for Kong Do, but Again, Samsung have this Baron for quite some time. They can just wait for Crown to come back up and continue that push straight through into the base. I'm sad Ambition has lost his 100% kill participation. He deserved it in this game. Carried during the game so hard. Baron meeting Crown actually ends up getting it after... So what happens here, here is the smite comes in early from Ambition One, and then it's secured by Rice. So Punch certainly had a very good chance to pick it up. Wasn't able to. Of course, he was lower level, so he had to wait. 
Check Wong his play though. Crowny ghosts. He's like, oh, I'm He's gonna like, kill I'm gonna edge. kill this guy. I'm gonna get him I'm around the corner. Get him. Oh. oh. Whoops. That's when you can arcane shift forward, Soul. That's a good opportunity to do something. All right, now you told me he can't kill tanks. Well, uh, this guy's pretty fit. I said if he reached the no, point. No, 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 this is, this is Deficia. He killed that tank He did fast. kill a tank. Ooh. I take it all back. He's, <laughs> he's definitely not super overfit. Well, slight mistiming on that. The Ash Arrow not going to come through for the assist. Uh, but Kyube, he is uh, he's pretty big on that pop. He still won't find the kill. Soul going to get hooked, but not a whole lot going to come off of that, I other than this tier 2 turret going down. down. So now all of the outer turrets have fallen. It's just the ones inside of the base for Kongdu. And this is when they really start getting bled dry. And what do you do if you're Kongdu monster for game three? Because this was a good draft for Kongdu monsters, but they just got super outplayed in the early to oh, mid game. On the Cougar, that's enough for ambition. He says, I'll go in on that. Cougar still slightly alive. The Redemption Hill coming through, keeping up for a little bit longer of a crown. He's looking for some kills. Souls able to answer one on See, Caustic's in team fights. <laughs> We'll get the kill on the Ezreal. That's going to be three picked up. Gugger and Roach, the only Whatever two makes you alive. feel better, Fischio. <laughs> <laughs> makes you sleep at night. <laughs> I don't know if Kongdu will be sleeping at night. And if they do, I think it's going to be full of nightmares of Samsung Galaxy just absolutely stomping over their faces here in this game, too. 23 to 9, the final kill on the board. The Nexus falls, and Samsung are suddenly at match point. Actually, Nexus hasn't gone down yet. We saw the spoilers on the player yeah. camps. Thanks well, for yeah, that, OGN. That slight little delay there, but. I didn't know they were gonna win. All have to die trying to kill Scooper. Right. Actually, take him down. 24 to 11. 23 to 9 wasn't quite right. They will lose two members there. Pat in the CS. We're getting a bit silly now, guys. Finish the game. There we go. And Samsung, pick comp with Kha'Zix. Showing you exactly how to play it now. Being able to recreate that as cleanly is gonna be very difficult. To me, by far the MVP here is the Kha'Zix. Specifically, yeah. ambition in the early game. Understand basically everything he saw, he took and took it to the next level. Yep. He sees the fail gank in mid. All right, I'm free to walk up now, even with my mid laner recalling and contest the blue. It's veteran play around red and just how he trans.